We're going to take a look at muscle twitches. Muscle twitch is just a contraction produced in a muscle fiber, motor unit, or whole muscle in response to a single action potential. If we look at the graph on the bottom, it shows a muscle twitch. We've got the time on the bottom of the graph, and then on the y-axis, we've got the tension or the force that's produced by the contraction. So notice that when we stimulate the muscle fiber or motor unit whole muscle to contract, there is a latent period before any force or tension is produced by the muscle starting to contract. And what's going on in this latent period is this is when excitation contraction coupling is happening. So we've got to generate the action potential inside the muscle fiber, and then we've got to release the calcium ions and get the cross bridge cycle started. And then we can finally start shortening the sarcomere and getting contraction going. And then the muscle fiber will then start to relax. And so this whole thing is called a muscle twitch. There's two different types of muscle twitches, so make sure you know this for the exam. This is really important to know. We have an isometric twitch. If you look at the name, this is going to help you figure out which one that you're looking at. Iso means the same, and metric means length. So this means that the muscle length stays the same, but the tension or the force is going to increase inside the, the muscle. So this is when you're trying to lift something that's too heavy, for example. So maybe you're trying to pick up a piano uh, that's way too heavy for you to lift. So your muscles would try to contract and lift that piano, but the little cross bridges, they're trying to do their little cross bridge cycle, but the load, the piano is too heavy for them to create enough force to slide those thin filaments over the thick filaments. And so they're not able to shorten the sarcomeres and contract and shorten the muscle and lift the piano. So the muscle length is gonna stay the same even though you do generate some force, but it's not enough force to lift the, the load. And then an isotonic twitch, iso meaning the same, and tonic is talking about tension or force. So this is where you are able to generate enough force or tension to be able to lift something, and your muscle will shorten, but the muscle tension will stay the same. So like maybe you're picking up a book and lifting it off the table or something. So when you're doing that, the muscle length will shorten, but the amount of tension or force that you're generating with your muscle while you're moving that book will stay the same while you're doing that motion. So that would be an isotonic twitch. And what's important to remember is that all muscle contractions will start off as an isometric contraction until you're able to generate enough force to overcome the load and start shortening the muscle and then you can turn it into an isotonic contraction. So let's take a look at this. Let's look at an isometric contraction first. So remember this one we're going to keep the muscle length the same, but the tension is going to increase. We've taken a muscle and we've attached it to this bottom piece that's not going to move. We're going to stimulate our muscle to contract. And when it contracts, it's going to generate a lot of force or tension, but it's not able to overcome the load and move this bottom piece at all. So the muscle is not able to shorten and lift the load. So the length stays the same on the muscle, but the tension is going to increase. 
So this is what makes it an isometric contraction because the muscle length stays the same, but the tension increases. And let's compare this to an isotonic contraction. So we're going to have a load that the muscle will be able to move. So the bottom graph, we're going to measure the tension or the force that the muscle produces. And then the graph on the top is going to measure how much the muscle is going to shorten. So when we start off, Notice that the tension is going to start to go up. And then we're going to hit a plateau here where the tension or the force will level off. And during this time when the tension or the force is increasing, notice that we're not getting any shortening at all of the muscle. So when we start off, we actually have an isometric twitch or contraction. And then when we get here where the force or tension stays the same, but our muscle is shortening here, now we've turned our twitch into an isotonic twitch. Okay, so remember an isotonic contraction or an isotonic twitch is where the tension or the force is, is staying the same while the length of the muscle will shorten. Okay, because we've generated enough force to overcome the load and move it. So our muscle will shorten as we lift the load. And we're just going to use the same amount of force to move that load while a muscle is shortening here and so that would be an isotonic contraction. So notice that our isotonic contraction it started off as isometric. We've got to generate enough force until we overcome the load and then we can start lifting it. We start shortening the muscle and then it turns into an isotonic contraction. All right one more picture. So we'll get this down. All right, so we're going to take a look at increasing the load. We're going to start off with a 5-gram weight and then work our way up to a 20-gram weight. And when we start, we're going to increase our tension here, or force. And then notice that the tension will level off and the muscle will start to shorten because we're able to overcome the five gram weight and start to lift it up as the muscle shortens and lifts that weight up. Okay, so what we have going on is in yellow, we haven't started shortening the muscle yet. We haven't overcome that load yet. So we start off with an isometric contraction because the muscle length stays the same, even though our tension is increasing. But then our tension is going to stay the same. And we've overcome that load, and now we start to shorten the muscle. And so then our contraction turns into an isotonic contraction. All right, and then if we increase the weight, now we're over to our 10 gram weight. So notice that it's going to take more force to overcome that 10 gram weight than it did the 5 gram weight, which makes sense. And then we start shortening and our tension stays the same. But we're not going to be able to lift that heavier weight for as long a period of time which we all know, right? So, because when things are heavier, we can't lift it for as long a period of time. So again, we're going to start off with an isometric contraction. So our muscle is going to stay the same length. We haven't started to shorten yet. We haven't generated enough force or tension to start lifting that weight. And then when we do start lifting the weight and shortening the muscle, 
our tension will stay the same, and then we turn it into an isotonic contraction. All right, and then we're going to increase the weight even more, up to 15 grams. And so now it takes even more force. We've got to generate before we overcome that heavier load. Okay, so again in yellow we've got this isometric contraction. And then we finally generate enough force. We start lifting the load, we start shortening the muscle, and our tension stays the same. And so our isometric contraction in yellow now turns into an isotonic contraction in purple. And again, notice how we can't lift that load for very long compared to that lighter load, the five gram load. Down here, we, able to, we were able to lift that one for a longer period of time. Okay, and then when we get to this 20 gram weight, look what happens. We just generate our force and we can't overcome that 20 gram weight. We cannot shorten our muscle. We don't generate enough force to start lifting it. And so it's just an isometric contraction. We never go over into the isotonic contraction. So it's only isometric at the end here because the weight's too heavy to lift. And so we never turn it into an isotonic contraction. We never shorten the muscle.